working boats, like the men and women who own them, experience the best of times and, unfortunately, the worst of times. Some fail to adapt to changing fortune, while others move on, adapt, and see a new day. We are on Tillman Island, Dogwood Harbor, about the center of the bay. I do sailing charters on Rebecca T. Ruark. Rebecca is 120 years old this year, and I started doing charters 15 years ago with Rebecca, and I've started doing it full time now. Rebecca Ruark is 52 feet long. She's 17 feet wide. That's a little bit larger than most skipjacks. Rebecca T. Ruark was built in 1886. She was built as an oyster boat. We know Rebecca was built as an oyster boat, but we don't know whether she was a schooner or a sloop because the skipjack never come into existence until 1891. So Rebecca was five years old when the first skipjack was built. Rebecca has been changed to a skipjack sail plan, so now we call her a skipjack. The skipjack sail plan the mast is the length plus the width of the boat. So the boat's 52 foot, 17 foot wide, so that makes 69 feet. The mast is 69 feet. The boom is the length of the boat. The boom is 52 feet. The center board, we have a center board that is between one third and one quarter of the length of the boat. A center board that goes down to keep the boat stable and to hold up in the tide. The boat's 17 foot wide and the bowsprit's about 18 feet long. So that's the rule of thumb on skipjacks. They have a rake mast. The reason they have a rake mast is because we need a lot of sail to pull the heavy dredges. The dredges weigh 150, maybe 200 pounds. And to drag that, it takes a lot of power. And so we need a lot of sail but we also need stability. So the mass is raked back, so the biggest part of the sail is over the widest part of the boat, which makes it more stable. But she is not a skipjack hull. Her bottom is round. Skipjack bottoms are flat. So she was changed, converted to a skipjack in the 20s, I've been told. She dredged horses for the last 117 years. When I speak about dredging, I'm talking about harvesting oysters under sail with a dredge. There used to be a thousand of them in the 1900. Uh, in my life, I started dredging in 1957, and there was over 80 skipjacks dredging oysters in 1957. Then, last winter, there was five in the whole bay. So they dwindled down from a thousand to 80 to five. I don't know, I'm afraid someday it just there will not be any left to harvest oysters. I started dredging in 1957 with my dad. Worked seven years with him. Quit him in 64, bought my first skipjack. Had it for 20 years. I watched Rebecca sail by me for 20 years, envying people that had boats like this. I can catch 30% more oyster with Rebecca than I can with my other boat. The other boat wasn't a good sailboat, but it was all I could afford to buy in 1964. You couldn't buy a good boat like Rebecca in 64 because anybody had one, kept it. It was a money maker and they kept it. The fella had this boat had it 35 years before I bought it. The fella he bought it from had it 35 years. And if I keep my health, I'm gonna have it 35 years. I don't oyster anymore because you can't make a living. And the only way to keep Rebecca floating is to take tours. I do a two hour tour normally. I do two trips a day, sometimes three trips a day on weekends. The people participate, they help put the sails up, they steer the boat. When I go out with my charters, the first thing I tell them about the wildlife, I tell them about well, the ospreys, we're gonna see ospreys. I tell them about the bay, I tell them about the boat crabs, the history of Tillman Island, the history of the oysters. More oysters grow between 10 and 20 feet of water than any other depth. 
Now around the shoreline, you might find some oysters in two, three feet of water. You might find some oysters out in 80 feet of water in a channel. I know a couple places where it's oysters 80 feet deep, but 95% of them are between 10 and 20 feet of water. I only have to go out about a half a mile to an oyster bed. We do a demonstration with the dredge. We actually catch oysters. Sailing the boat, I can feel the boat slow down. We drag on the bottom, we pull it up, and it's gonna have about 75, 80% live oysters. I guarantee my trips, if people don't learn anything, it's because they didn't pay attention. It's gonna be a very educational trip, and they're gonna learn a lot on my boat. Rebecca became a National Historic Landmark in 03. So that helps a lot for the future. She's never gonna die because they ain't gonna let her die. Rebecca's gonna be here forever, so your children, grandchildren, whoever's gonna be able to ride on this boat. If I'm not here, somebody will be here. Rebecca's gonna be here anyway. Now, you wanna go sailing, you're welcome to take a ride.